Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. I want to, before I start, thank the Cancer Center Executive Committee and the Retreat Planning Committee for inviting me here today to talk with you about team science. I think everyone recognizes that the typical unit that we think about in academic medical research is the single PI and their laboratory. But there has been very much a paradigm shift in that thought, not to in any way minimize the importance of the PI in their laboratory, but a shift towards team science where we think about bringing together a group of individuals where each of those individuals brings a critical piece of expertise to the team so that those members together are more and more impactful than um, each individual by themselves for that specific goal that they have. And interestingly, I wanna share with you that one of the phrases that many of us often use, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, actually comes from Aristotle. Um, I was doing some research in putting together this talk and looking at how different people use the word team and how they define it. And Aristotle, it wasn't exactly worded like this, but he does discuss this concept in his writings on metaphysics. So I just thought that that was very interesting. And I also found another way of thinking about the word team itself that I think is really fun which is together everyone achieves more. And that's really what um, I wanna to talk to you about today. So for some disciplines, um, we've been doing team science since before anyone called it team science. So as a biostatistician, I regularly work with teams of individuals and talk through with them what their scientific ideas are, what their goals are, and I help try to move forward an appropriate study design and analytical plan for them to answer their questions. So I think I've been doing team science my entire career, but no one ever talked about it like that. Um, but as discussed, there's really been very much a paradigm shift and a very important component to that paradigm shift is the recognition of individuals for promotion and tenure at many institutions, including Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine, for team science, which I think is incredibly exciting, very impactful, and helps all of us moving forward to think of ourselves as doing not only our own work as a single PI, but also what types of work can we achieve together, because together everyone achieves more. So when you think about a team, most people think about a team in the context of a sports analogy. And so today I wanna to talk to you about how do you think about building your team and what roles you need on the team to be fulfilled by various team members? And I will use that sports analogy to help us think through that. So if you think about a sports team and roles and responsibilities, you have multiple important people and um, that all play a critical role, just like in a team science group. So the team owner provides the sponsorship. They're the ones who pay the bills. They're the ones who make opportunities happen for that team. The coach provides the support and the guidance. The team captains provide the leadership for the team and really help bring everyone together towards a common goal. The team members, so everybody has a specific role. Why is that? Because they all have specific abilities that are unique to them. Sometimes those abilities can overlap with other team members, and, but mostly they're meant to synergize with other team members and therefore uplift the team in general. What about the opposing team members? That's the competition. Why are they important for us to think about in the sports team analogy? Because we can learn from them. And that is really, really important as we're putting together ideas to think about who's the competition, what are they working on, how can we make our work unique and impactful in that context. Of course, there's the team trainer who helps with the health of the team. 
physical and sometimes also mental health. And then the fans are incredibly important, right? We all have a social network who helps support us, who helps make connections for us, and um, who helps keep us sane, especially in these very interesting times that we're living in now. So hopefully this sports team analogy resonates with you. And as you're starting to think about a possible team science approach to the disease that you're studying, to the questions that you have, you can think about who you might want to have in place that could serve each of these important roles. But I think it's one thing to think about who could be members on the team. And it's another thing to think about how you would actually operationalize that team. And so I'm going to go through a series of, I would say, um, recommendations that I'm gonna give to you and share with you today on how you operationalize a team based on my own experience in team science. So the first thing I think is to, uh, once you've assembled your team and you start to think about as a team, what are your shared goals and shared hypotheses to set expectations and set them early. I think it's really important for everyone to understand what the playing field is and what the rules of engagement are with each other and for everyone to feel comfortable about those rules and communication with everyone else on the team. And I think it's important, just like with all science that we do, that it's an iterative process. And so even though you set some expectations right at the beginning, those expectations may need to iterate and be changed and adjusted as you move forward with your common goals. Creating shared goals, and not just scientific goals, but also communication goals, publication goals, additional grant writing goals, possibly goals related to trainees that you have involved with your project is really, really important because it creates a sense of team immediately if everybody can get on board with the same goals. Set a timeline with milestones. Sometimes those timelines are set for you, right? If you are bringing together a team for a specific grant deadline, then that timeline is set. And then you have to back yourself out of that to create more detailed milestones so that you can make that deadline. Remember, it's important to think about milestones both small and large, and to actually revisit and adjust your timeline often. Again, teams are can iterate and they can evolve over time, just like your science is iterating and evolving over time. Hold everyone accountable. I think that this is really, really important. The people that you're bringing together on your team are there because they all serve a critical role. And what that means is, is that each person should have certain tasks that they're responsible for because that's what their discipline is and that's why you've brought them on board. And so make sure to hold everyone accountable. And there are ways of doing this with kindness and with respect. And I think that um, while it's critically important to set expectations and hold everyone accountable, I should have had first and foremost, kindness and respect is really, really important to creating a positive team environment. Develop a plan for a regular meeting schedule so that you can keep the momentum going and learn from each other. We're all busy, right? And I think Uh, The way that we time manage is different, and the way that we utilize our time to um, achieve our goals is different. And so having a regular meeting schedule with everyone helps everyone to level set and think about what are the next things that they want to discuss with the team, and what are the next milestones, and what are the next goals. As your team evolves and your science evolves, you may identify gaps in the team that you did not originally think about. Um, Perhaps you've added an aim to a project and now all of a sudden you need an additional person in that discipline. So be cognizant of the fact that the team may need to evolve, you may identify gaps down the road and you may need to fill them with new team members. And as you bring on new team members, you wanna make sure that you're orienting them 
to the team goals and the team milestones and timelines and holding those new people accountable, just like everyone else on the team. I think this next item is really important. Publish together early and often. Why is that? It's not uncommon that we get a review back on a grant with a new team where one of the things that comes back as a comment is, well, I don't see any of them publishing together, so perhaps maybe they aren't going to be able to work together. I think publishing early and often shows a strong team and shows that you absolutely can be successful together. Look for all opportunities to advertise the team. This is something very new to me, I will admit. Um, I've just recently joined social media. Per the guidance of um, multiple folks in the Cancer Center, in the School of Medicine, and in my department, saying that, you know, really the main point is, is that you have to be willing to advertise yourself, which I know can be very uncomfortable, but also advertise the team. So it's beyond just getting invited to talks at meetings and visiting professorship and giving talks locally. I think that those are all things that we regularly do, we regularly think about, but it's then posting the slides from that talk on social media and creating possibly a tagline for your team or creating a interesting acronym for your team or creating a website for your team and continuing to push out on the social media channels updates on the team, updates on your presentations, updates on publications, updates on things that trainees are doing on your team. I think that this is something that is maybe outside what we normally think about in terms of advertising our team. Most of us, at least for myself, I think about, oh, I've been invited to give a talk at a national or international peer-reviewed meeting. That's great advertisement for the team and for our work. But then I also need to push it out on a social media channel. And then I would just say um, a couple things I really want to hit home on is evolving. So I think it's important to have the structure of the team. Everyone understands what their role is, what the common goals are, what the common hypotheses you're working on, learning to work together and publish together. But everyone has to understand that science is an ever iterative process and an evolution, right? Many times the aims that we start with when we're writing a grant, for example, or we're putting together a, an idea for a paper, they may change drastically by the time that we actually submit that grant or we publish that paper. And teams are the same way. Um, so some team members may leave and some new ones may arrive and that's okay. And that's the way that it goes when you're doing team science. But at the end of the day, the important thing is that the team continues to grow and adapt and evolve to reach the common set of goals that the team has established. And then I would just say that I think it's easy for us to think about teams needing to be this big, massive effort, and it needs to be towards a common goal of a big, multi, multi-million dollar grant. But not all team science needs to be major league. And even small projects can benefit from a team approach. And again, this is because each person on the team brings a critical piece of expertise that synergizes and brings something new and builds into something bigger. And I think that this is really where the impact of teams comes in. So I will leave you again with um, the really nice acronym. I did not make this up myself, so I don't want to take credit for it. But together, everyone achieves more. And I hope that I've given you some ideas about how to think about bringing the right people together to start building your team and how to operationalize your team so that all of us can have the highest level of impact that we can for cancer patients and their families. And thank you again so much for having me.